So the two meet up sometime later at an old mill and we get our first knife shot, which is refreshing. The two of them do what comes most natural to them. They stare at each other for a bit. This is some uh, pretty intense gazing, by the way. It um, kind of makes me a little uncomfortable, to be honest. The two go inside the mill for some sexy time. And if you look at the windows in the background, you can see that it is now daytime again. They have a uh, roll in the hay, literally. And then she gives him her necklace. His response is to say nothing, not a single word, but to just stare at her. His signature move. And also, from this point on, I'm going to refer to this particular Nazi as Scar, because uh, no name is actually given to this character. Now we get uh, more scenes of uh, Nazis fighting an invisible army. Check out that bus that drives by in the background. I guarantee you that wasn't planned at all, but that bus just drove by as that explosion went off and they just had to use that footage. That's uh, really the least of this movie's problems though. And the overall point of this scene is to just show that time is passing, which is, which is good. They attempted. Scar visits the woman and she's laying in her bed and doesn't get up. Evidently, she's sick. There's also a baby carriage in the room and Scar goes and looks at the baby. And check out the acting here. This guy is just a bundle of personality. I can see why that woman fell for him so. Mr. Personality, aka Scar, reunites with the other Nazis and they go off and do uh, Nazi stuff. The Nazis are ambushed by the villagers and shot to death. And when I say they're shot to death, I use that term loosely because you can clearly see that nothing is hitting them. We do get to see one Nazi shot in the eye with some blood squirting out. And if you look closely, you can see the tubing supplying the blood going up the Nazi's uniform. As the Nazis are being mowed down, it cuts back to the woman in her bed and now she's dead. No explanation given. She's just, she's dead now. I guess she just lost the will to live for no apparent reason. The mayor hears all the gunfire and sees all the dead Nazis' bodies and says they need to dispose of the bodies. You can't just go and leave all those bodies behind you. We can't bury them, but we'll just throw them in the lake. They throw all the Nazis in the lake, and I, uh, I love the continuity here. Check this out. Uh, last one. So I guess that really wasn't the last one. And that concludes the, uh, the flashback portion of the movie, which was about 20 minutes long. So now we're back in the mayor's house and something's a little different. Can you, uh, can you spot it? Do you see something that stands out at you? Well, sir, I would like to thank you. You've been- The mirror behind the reporter has this big black barrier in front of it. Obviously, someone on the crew noticed there were some reflections being given off and decided to cover the mirror. I gotta say, that black barrier doesn't draw any attention to itself at all. It looks completely natural that way. 40 minutes into the movie and it hits me. I don't know what this movie's about and it seems to be heading nowhere fast. And it's already halfway over. Most movies tend to have a, a main character or a protagonist that is like the driving force of the movie. By the 40 minute mark, they're usually well established and on their way. 
Here we are, 40 minutes into the movie, and I have no idea what's going on. Generally speaking, that's not the best situation. Also, is it strange that I don't know a single person's name at this point? There's not been a single name given. Now it cuts to a young girl, Helen. So we finally got a name now. And uh, she's sitting on some hay, and this girl's in some desperate need of some pants. You would naturally assume that this young girl is the, uh, the baby from that crib earlier, but now all grown up. But let's think about this. World War II ended around 1945, and this movie seems to be taking place in the 80s. So that would make that baby about 35 years old at this point. And this girl looks to be about 10 years old at best. Um, but I guess we just have to go with it, but that's a, that's a pretty big oversight. That's a, that's a poor continuity. A large group of girls arrive at the village in a van, and their van says that they are a basketball team. But as the girls pour out of the van, they begin to play in volleyball. <laughs> here, over here. Naturally, they all get naked, hop in the lake, and splash about, as typical girls would do in this situation. Europe, making dreams reality. Here are some more of those convincing underwater shots, just to remind you what type of movie you're watching. So they're all standing in water, which seems to be about waist high, but when the camera switches to the underwater scenes, they seem to be swimming in water, which is at least six feet deep. The zombies attack the girls, and one of them manages to survive and runs to the nearby village. <laughs> just never mind that perfectly good van just sitting there with the keys in the ignition. That would have made for a great getaway car. She makes it to the tavern and tells the locals that she and her friends were attacked by zombies. Look at the girl in the purple to the right. She knows what kind of movie she's in, and she can't hide it. The mayor hears of the attacks and calls the police for reinforcements. The man's right out of his head. You know what he says, huh? A bunch of ghosts about to attack his village. kill all his inhabitants and he wants some police reinforcements and when the reinforcements arrive the mayor explains the situation to them but the police don't believe him i hope you don't really think ghosts killed them yes that's what i think in fact i'm convinced of it the zombies are on the prowl throughout the village and then scar recognizes something he sees the doorway where the mother of his child used to live. This is Scar standing outside a door. This is Scar seen from a different perspective, but now he's standing outside a window. This is called poor continuity. Scar walks in the door or crawls through the window and then sees Helen, who is his daughter, who should be about 35 by the way. Helen recognizes a necklace that the zombie is wearing as belonging to her mother. So therefore, she knows that this zombie is actually her father. And let me just tell you, this is such an extremely emotional and very touching scene between a father and daughter. Just try to refrain from crying. I mean, just look at the acting on both sides here. Just try to contain yourself. Try to hold back the tears.